ladies and gentlemen, it has been far too long. It is I, Master of Gentleman's Combat, Terror of Any Man, making his MMA debut, Alastair Fleming. And I am recording for you today the Battle Extreme Fighting Battlecade 1. One of the better events, but one of the worst takes in all of mixed martial arts. I sat down uh, a few weeks ago and tried to record this. Uh, and it took me three hours and it was just shit. Uh, it is the worst thing I have ever done. And so what I've decided to do is cut out all the bullshitting. All of John Peretti's glorious butt chin. We won't see any of that. What we have are the things that we have come here to see today actually. So this includes fights, Mr. T interviews, and very quickly all of the uh, penthouse pets that the uh, Extreme Fighting blew their money on to start with. Also, the uh, very nice Extreme Fighting t-shirts that they were selling. But we've had 60 seconds of that. I have condensed down two hours of this show into the uh, introduction here. And now we will listen to Mr. T. Thanks, Dave. That's right, it's me. Who was you expecting? Mickey Mouse? That's beside the point. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I'm going to show you these fighters backstage. We're in the back part what we call the E-Team. The E-Team for extreme fighters. These guys are bad. Better than me, but we ain't going to talk about that. I'm going to introduce you to some of the guys. Some guys are going to talk to you. Some guys not. Now, if the guy don't want to talk to me, that's okay. I understand that. These guys are prepared. They've been training for years, you know. Enough talking. These guys are ready. I watched them stretch this morning, you know, pulling their muscles, all that stuff. I tell you, this is going to be exciting, you know. So sit back, relax, you know. Fasten your seatbelt. This is going to be some kind of ride. I'm excited to be here. Stay tuned. All right. Take it back, Dave. Rah! Thanks, Mr. T. And here we go with fight number one, Health Gracie versus Kazuo Moroka. And so this is where they spend part of their money on getting a Gracie in, because it's not a fight show without a Gracie. We're seeing the uh, actual boxing belonging to the Carlson Gracie side of the Gracie family. And he's uh, clubbing the crap out of poor Moroka, who is a Japanese shoot fighter and karateka. Nice right hand, into the outside trip, perfect takedown, good combo, still works today. So, uh, always worthwhile. And Moroka's given up his back, which is that sort of shoot fighting wrestling uh, background. And that was a very poor mistake. Because now he's got Half Gracie pulling his head off. And Half Gracie has his chin securing his other hand. So you saw when Moroka reached up there to uh, peel off the grips. He couldn't because Half Gracie's hand was there. And that's it. Match number one. I just saved you 15 minutes. We've watched it in 40 seconds. And match number two is coming up right now. It is Igor Zinoviev versus Harold German. Igor Zinoviev looks like a huge, scary, massive motherfucker, and he's just sidekicked the shit out of Harold German and then foot sweeped him beautifully. German is a boxer, and uh, Igor's hit a nice uh, rolling knee bar, but he hasn't got his other leg through, so he's not going to be able to get the uh, torque required on the knee. He's actually cranking on German's Achilles, and uh, German's actually done a pretty good job. Uh, taking top, but Eagles funk rolled, taking top again, and he sat back and decided, you know what, fuck this, I'm gonna punch you instead. No more of this leg lock and shit. Uh, Igor Zinoviev was uh, John Peretti's big find with uh, extreme fighting, because as you can see here, he was just a monster. And uh, I'm not gonna say that he was the first guy to get Sambo guys to come along, because uh, Oleg Taktarov had fought along, but he really started getting Sambo guys noticed in the US. Uh, beyond the tactile. So there we are, that's that fight, and now we've got a Mr. T interview. Oh no, we got a replay of that awesome fucking Van Damme sidekick that sent Harold German three quarters of the way across the ring, and that foot sweep afterwards. Now we've got Mr. T. First of all, congratulations on that tough match. Could you tell us what kind of maneuver did you use? Okay, what's the style? What's the style? Okay, and how long have you been fighting for the fans out? They want to know. All right, thanks, man. Thanks, thanks, thanks. All right, there you have it, people. You know, you've been fighting all his life. These men are prepared for this here. They know what they're doing, you know. So don't try if you ain't prepared. That's what I got to say. Tip from Tip from the T. All right, here we go. Uh, fight number three, Gary Myers versus Tom Glanville. I think he heard you on cue. Uh, Tom Glanville is a kickboxer. Gary Myers uh, is a wrestler, as you can see by that double leg shot. Misses the shot, but rolls through on the leg and comes out on top. In danger of a triangle, but we do not really know of the jiu-jitsu background of Mr. Tom Glanville. I cut out the interviews, but he did say that he'd been working on his ground fighting, so that's uh, good to know. Uh, Gary Myers is punching him directly in the buttock. 
And uh, Tom Glanville has not secured their triangle. Uh, Glanville and Myers actually weigh about the same, but Gary Myers is 5'8", whereas Tom Glanville is 6'1 or 6'2", and just shredded, whereas Gary Myers is shaped like a barrel. And uh, Gary's doing an okay job of defending this triangle, even though he doesn't exactly know what he's doing, and he's probably going to turn that into a pass fairly soon. As you can see, he's got his posture back all the way, and Tom Glanville's legs have nearly popped. Uh, Gary's kneed him in the ass again, punched him in the face, and he's gotten his head free! And so he's, uh, see how he's wound his arm through on that leg? That's a real nice uh, wrestling control. And he's, uh, he's on top of Glanville now, and he's just going to ruin his fucking day. Because Gary was, uh, he was a very good wrestler. I don't remember his um, college pedigree, but it was quite good. And his uh, cornermen were wearing the uh, American flag Zubaz pants. And uh, he's using the fence here to lever his forearm in and just choke the shit out of Mr. Poor Tom Glanville. You can see uh, Gary's corner there shouting at him. Uh, all a bunch of big meaty fireman looking dudes in American flag pants. They're uh, absolutely awesome. And Glanville is not having a fun time. Oh, he nearly went unconscious there, but he's uh, managed to come back and uh, escape the forearm choke. So he's uh, able to breathe. Gary's uh, thinking about doing something else now. We'll find out what he's going to do. He's going to punch him, and now he's going to think about something else. Uh, Tom Glanville tried to stiff arm away. Back to that forearm choke goes Gary, and uh, he's still using the forearm choke. And now he's going to think about something. Yes, headbutts! Beautiful headbutts, and Tom Glanville has tapped. And Gary Myers does a sick fucking combat roll. Uh, and he's very pumped, understandably. And here come his corner. Look at those pants. The best outfit ever. Right, let's see what Mr. T has to say. Ladies and gentlemen, we have Gary the Bear. Could you tell us what kind of maneuver you put on him? Double leg takedown. How long you been training, Gary? 21 years. All right, now you want to look at yourself, I mean, whether you're short on tape or whatnot, you know, you use a headbutt there. Yeah. That's right. Anything goes. Did you knock him out with the headbutt? What was it then? What happened to him? Well, he's a kickboxer. Can't deal with a grappler. Grappler's the meanest man in the world. Yeah. You see here, I'm just biding my time. I feel good here. Munchie Strike Force trained me to get right in here and come out and keep my elbows in. So, uh, as we're going here, I still think I was a little worried about getting an arm lock. But uh, here is exactly where my team had me come. As we got to the cage, Tom Harper and uh, the crew uh, from the strike force just said, use the fence, choke him out. In the street, headbutts, everything's allowed. All right, Gary, I mean, did you feel him giving, giving in a little bit? Did you feel him getting weak? Because both of you started off pretty tough there. He's, he's getting weak and coming back strong. You see, he just, he just come back. Like, and hey. All right, so he was trying to use a little sneaking maneuver on you, you know? Yeah, like I would give, let up as he was giving out. I was like, nah, keep the pressure. Okay, Bear, you know, I know you got you got rid of him. You know, you got another fight coming up. You know, I know you got to get some rest and whatnot. You're going you're gonna to try to use the same maneuver on the other guy. Depends on what he used, right? Oh, depending on uh, whatever Hoover wins, I will uh, maybe just go fight with my hands. I have everything I can use. I can't kick, obviously, my shoes. I didn't train that way, though. But hi, Jennifer. Thank you for everything. Come on, Bear. Oh, yeah. All right. All right. Thanks, Phyllis, for getting me here. She's my manager, Phyllis Lee. All right, Bear, thanks. He will <laughs> Just drag him out to the back. Take it over, brother. All right. All right. <laughs> Mr. T's getting better at interviewing, actually holding the uh, microphone in the right place. And here we have Mario Sperry versus Rajad Moncayo, who fought on UFC 6. Uh, Mario Sperry has a 272-0 uh, record, but that is in jiu-jitsu comp. It's not like Hicks and Gracie's 400-0 Street Fighter. Records. It's slightly more believable. And he's known as the Zen, Mas Zen Machine. Not the Zen Machine. <laughs> Zen Machine. And the uh, founder of the Brazilian top team. And you can see he's uh, just gone to his Jiu Jitsu roots and hit a very nice upper body trip. And uh, he's into a grapevine mount. And he's just going to sit on top of poor Rudyard here. And now he can use Moncayo's energy against him. Now Mario just relaxes. 
Carson Grace the senior just saying, relax, relax. Whenever you keep want, do it. Whenever you want, do it. Just keep the position, you know, don't lose the position. That's all they talk about. You also lose strength as you try to battle up from the bottom. Ah, as I've let you listen to the uh, actual commentators just bullshit here. It, um, John Prady, good matchmaker, terrible commentator. Absolutely awful. Uh, and uh, I didn't leave any of it in, but every time you can see him talking about the fights, he's looking very sort of lovingly into the eyes of his fellow commentator. It's a little bit weird, and po and there was sort of visible discomfort on the other commentator's eyes. Uh, Mario Sperry is trying for a top key lock here, double wrist lock, V1 arm lock if you want your catch uh, terminology, or the Americana. But uh, Rajad Moncayo is doing a pretty good job of defending here. Um, Mario's not going to side control because he's worried about losing position. And since Rajad's gotten out of that, Mar Mario's decided that, fuck you, I'm going to punch you a few times. Just to, you know, make this a little bit easier for myself. He's going to push it across and try to release the back of the neck. Well, he's over his... And Rajad's still up on his uh, neck here. Still sort of keeping him from finishing the fight. So he's going back to that arm lock and very smart jujitsu from Mario Sperry. He's not trying for the armbar from Mount, which is quite often what gets people reversed. Although Rajas bridged here and Mario thought about the armbar but missed it. And instead he's gone to an underhook and he's going out in the half guard. Rajad stepped over and now Mario's going to use an elevator hook, spin him right over and take top position again. So he's in Rajad's half guard. I don't know if it's Rajad or Rujad or whatever, but you know, pronounce it how you will. And now he's back in mount and so rather than messing around, he's just going to punch him in the face and Moncayo is tapping. And so that is it. Mario Sperry has won his May match. All right, let's listen to Mr. T's interview. First of all, congratulations and thank you for taking time for me to interview you. Could you tell me about the fight that you did there? Well, uh, it was a very, very difficult fight. Not a very difficult fight, but I, I was a bit scared in the moment that he just had some advantage. I was in a position and he moved it down. I was a bit scared, but I was very lucky. Right, yeah, we, you, right, yeah, I was, I was watching that, you know, you was on top for a while, then he rolled you, but they told me that you're the, you the best at this here. They say they call you the Zen. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's a very old nickname, but... Okay. All right. Right, but yeah, yeah, we was watching, you know, what, uh, what kind of maneuver did you do to get him, get the, the tables turned on him, to flip him over? Well, that, that's a maneuver that I like very much. I put my head, my leg on his leg and just turn him over. So most of the things for the people out there is a, is a lot of balance. You know, I know that you... you, I know that you we, need a lot of, no, we need a lot of balance. It's not power, it's just, just balance. Okay. All right, people, you heard a lot of balance. Thanks, brother. Congratulations. That's all right, man. You're good. Take it away, Dave. Oh Mario Sperry is slightly uh, starstruck there, giving Mr. T a pat on the belly. And here we go, Conan Silvera versus some Russian guy. Uh, what's his damn name? Ah, uh, Viktor Tatarkin. Uh, Viktor Tatarkin is a teammate of our other Russian master, Igor Zinoviev. And Conan Silvera is the man that sort of started the... Uh, the legend of Saku Sakuraba by beating Conan Silvera at uh, UFC Japan. Nice takedown by Conan Silvera there. But uh, Tatakin's doing a good job of preventing him from getting the hooks. He's uh, building up his base and standing back up. And Silvera is rolling him through. And uh, now he's managed to get Tatakin flattened out and he's using that uh, gift rep to keep him pinned. Tatakin's uh, holding onto that arm but he's getting butchered by the massive muscle machine that is Marcus Conan Silveira. As you can see by Tatarkin's uh, knees, he's an old fucking dude. And uh, he was, a, I believe, a judoka as well as a sambist. So he, uh, it's understandable that his knees are completely fucking shot. Uh, Conan Silveira is trying for just a face crank here. He's basically just camel clutching poor old uh, Tatarkin. And Tatarkin is doing what he can. He's uh, managed to build up Oh, he's done the right thing, he's based up, but you can see Conan Silvera's foot, the way he's sort of grapevined it through Tatarkin's leg and basing out with that other hand, he's managed to prevent himself from being rolled over. So uh, Tatarkin's doing a good job, but he's just not quite strong enough, and Conan Silvera is just a bit too technical for uh, 
Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's just a bit too technical for these reversals that Tatakin is trying. Uh, heel kick to the stomach there. Uh, Tatakin's sort of constantly going belly down, possibly a sort of left layer. Uh, a holdover from his Sambo roots because pinning in Sambo is a method of scoring and chokes are not allowed in sport or combat Sambo. I'm not sure if this was the same at the rule set, same in the rule set at the time, but currently you cannot choke in uh, sport Sambo. And he's getting fucked up. I think he might have tapped there, but uh, no one seems to have noticed. Uh, Conan Silvera is gonna butcher the poor man. Yeah, he can't get out. He is. Seriously, not doing well. And Igor Zinoviev has done the right thing and thrown in the towel. Conan Silvera is your winner and moves on to the semi-finals or the finals? Finals of the heavyweight tournament. Here's Mr. T! What kind of chokehold did you put on him? They call in Brazil, Matalhão. You know, it's kind of hard for you to explain right now. You know, but... The best. Okay, now I saw your record. 273 victories now, right? Yeah, that's why. What, what are you talking about? The Gisbert right now? Yes. Uh, well, he's a very, very strong guy. You know, he's a lightweight, but he's a very strong guy. You know, and I know he's a very strong opponent. So it's a, you know, it's a very good fight. Yes, it was, and you know, I, I admire, you know, the good sportsmanship after you got through fighting, you helped him up and things like that. I mean, you, you doing a lot of punches, you know, could you tell us about that? There's nothing personal. Right. You know, this is sport. And I believe then, uh, the people got to watch this way. The, the, the violence is not what you're doing here. The violence is outside. You know, the people don't know how, how, doesn't know how to defend themselves. That's the violence. I mean, I, I, what I mean here, if everybody, you know, spend a little bit, and martial arts, any style, you know, they probably gonna think better, they're gonna live better. That's the point. Right, you know, that's what I've been telling a lot of people, you know, a lot of people been saying it's so vicious and things like that, but you guys been training for years, and that's what I want the people to understand, the years uh, that you've been training. Uh, custom race jiu-jitsu is something very normal for us, what you, what you see right now, is uh, that's why street fight with 100% agonics. So, you know, that's what you do in the school. Of course, you don't punch each other, but you know, you get very close to the situation. Right, right. You never I like all the wrestling maneuver. I really, really, I'm impressed with the balance that you guys have. You know, I'm in, right. and the fans are really into that too. You know, you know, you, you know, very, very. I mean, you expert to uh, deal with the close distance and closing distance. You know, so far it's very easy to get close and you all step up. You know. Right, right. That's, that's, that's good. I mean, this, you know, a lot of people don't understand, but they thought because the guy was small that he wasn't tough, you know. This guy is no, tough, he is you know. very tough. Right. Very, very tough. You know, right. I, 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 I gave him a very good punch in the face, and he was there. You know, he was very, very tough, you know, I believe. Yes. We, tough, both of you guys were. And congratulations on what you get your rest. Thanks, brother. All right, now, good luck. Yes, sir. All right, Dave, back to you, brother. Thank you, Mr. Yeah. T. Well, very good. <laughs> Mr. T's getting a little drunk out the back. And here we have uh, Alfonso Alcaraz versus Robert Loyer, a French-Canadian man who looks extremely nice and looks kind of like Ned Flanders if he was a karate coach. Uh, Alfonso Alcaraz was a kickboxer but also wrestled in school, as you can see by the excellent blast double he just uh, put on poor Mr. Robert Loyer. Uh, Alcaraz is sort of going to try and lever his head free of this schoolyard headlock that... Uh, Robert Loyer has, and uh, he's probably just going to ride it out because he's not really in much danger. Yeah, he's managed to recover his head, and Loyer's doing a good job of minimizing distance and not getting damaged, but yeah, he, as you can see by the way his legs are flailing, he doesn't really know what he's doing, and he's uh, punching up from the bottom, which is always the sign of uh, a man doing excellently in a mixed martial arts fight. Yeah, if ever you see someone punching up from the bottom of the mount, expect to see them get finished fairly soon. Little baby punches from uh, Alfonso Alcarez here. Doing absolutely nothing to Robert Loyer. 
Davis is trying to turn here and get some go. leverage. Wait a minute. Here it is. He's still dominated pretty badly and taking tremendous body shots. This is not tremendous body shots, says John Pretty. That's a fucking lie. Uh, Robert Loyer has a big cut opened up over the top of his eye, either from a clash of heads or from one of those punches from Alfonso Alcarez. So they will be calling the match there as soon as uh, we get the towel taken away. You can see that the cut is actually rather large. It's over, says the doctor. So they're going to go wave it off. Yeah, it is. It's uh, pretty big and it's flowing directly into his eyeball. That's Victorio in the corner there, looking at it. Victorio says it's very bad. And the doctor does not buy the argument in the corner. So that is it. Very quick, lightweight fight between Alfonso Alcarez and Robert Loyer. So let's listen to the interview with Mr. T. Congratulations, Alfie. Could you tell us what kind of technique you use? <clears throat> Let's see, I use a double leg takedown to take him down to the ground. I know he's, he's a tough kickboxer, so why fight on his feet when I'm, I'm a much better wrestler? A lot of people don't know that. <clears throat> they know me for my kickboxing ability. We'll be right here. Beautiful double leg takedown. I wanted to stay low so he couldn't so he couldn't get me in his guard and control both legs. <clears throat> right there, I felt real comfortable. He went to that headlock. That headlock's not very effective at all. <clears throat> here I uh, mounted him. Just, just wanted to take my time, use my knuckles, dig my knuckles in, try to, try to pound them out. Oh, and now in fighting, you know, there's a lot of talk about using your hand. You know, they say you know, that you don't want to use your hand that much because your hand will get sore. So you just use a little bit so he can bring his guards down so he can work on the leg. Right, you want to work, work him from bottom, upstairs, downstairs, upstairs, down, so you get him to bring his hands down, open up the shot. <clears throat> As you see, I didn't get on top of him and try to rush anything. Just control, relax, take my shots, why, why waste my knuckles, and I got a career here. <laughs> All right, that's pretty good, Alfie. All right, so uh, thanks so much, man, and thanks yes. To a few people, my daughter, Kiana, I love you, Daddy loves you a lot. My brother, Renee, One Kick, uh, Ford Contracting, Tommy Ford, thanks a lot for letting me off work for this. All the guys at Ford, Harris, <clears throat> uh, John, uh, John Lewis, who's coming up next, he helped me out. One kick, my trainer, um, my girlfriend, everybody who's, who's been with me, Tommy, all, all my friends, all my friends. What's up, Las Vegas? All right, all right, you heard it. He'd be coming home a winner. All right, thanks, buddy. Get your rest. All right, let's go back to you, Big Dave. Ha! 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 All right, all right. <laughs> Getting drunker and drunker is Mr. T. Right, here we have the lightweight championship between John Lewis and Carlson Gracie Jr. John Lewis was a dancer uh, prior to taking up martial arts and is probably the most mixed, sort of rounded mixed martial artist on the card. Nice low kicks from John Lewis on the uh, Gracie boxing style of Mr. Gracie Jr. who looks like a giant baby. A giant baby that could probably tear me two pieces, but a giant baby nonetheless. Nice uh, single leg takedown, uh, but good whizzer from uh, John Lewis. In fact, he's doing nice elevator hooks Pushing down on the head. Good little uh, grappling exchange here. He's doing a good job of managing to keep his hips away and uh, open up space to open up the opportunity for a stand-up. Uh, Carlson Grace Jr. has managed to pin him momentarily, but he's actually taking damage from the bottom from the ex-dancer, John Lewis. And Lewis is unreasonably shredded. Just super lean. It's crazy. People aren't meant to look like that. And you can see how he's uh, keeping him away. Goes for the double ankle idiot sweep and Carlson Gracie nearly falls for it. Uh, Lewis manages to take top position and uh, Carlson Gracie going to De La Hiva or Spiral Guard here. And uh, Gracie's doing the right, uh, not Gracie, Lewis is doing the right thing, getting that foot off the hip so he loses some of his leverage. He's also using the cage to keep himself standing. Interesting there, punch directly to the meat of the quad. Of the giant baby that is Carlson Gracie Jr. Two and is out. Nice kick, and he's managed to pass around the legs. 
Uh, Castle Gracie Jr. going out on a leg lock attempt here, but Lewis is keeping his weight on that leg, preventing uh, the black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu from getting any leverage to attack that leg for a lock. In fact, he has gi given up on it. Nice uh, punch from John Lewis there. Uh, going back to that spiral guard, trying to make that work for him. Nicer stomp from John Lewis, using the cage to stay up like the cheating fuck that he is. Although, there was no rule in uh, Battlecade Extreme Fighting 1 that you couldn't use the cage. So, not necessarily cheating in this context. Uh, Hellbows, the uh, Travis Brown special before he became kind of crappy. And his nice uh, cross face attempt there. Uh, no, no, that uh, takedown attempt was almost successful, but due to the presence of the cage, Master Lewis was able to stay up. Right, I reckon we'll probably see things slow down, because we've had three minutes of almost constant action in this fight. Uh, nice punch from giant baby Carlson Gracie. <laughs> I'm going to keep saying that. I mean, no disrespects. Uh, John Lewis wanted to throw away his mouth guard, but the referee Goko Chivechian uh, has said no. Goko Chivechian is a bit of a sort of mystery in the grappling slash mixed martial arts world, because he has uh, sort of claims to titles and he's a sort of legit coach, but no one can find any actual fights of his. So there's the sort of, is this man sort of like a Frank Duxian character? Uh, we may never know, but he did produce such fighters as uh, Judo Jean LaBelle and a couple, not Judo Jean, uh, he trained with Judo Jean LaBelle and, what's his fucking name? Uh, Kara Prisian. Kara Prisian fought out of Goko Chivichian's gym. That uh, head position of Carlson Gracie is very good. He's keeping John Lewis pinned hard against the cage by using his head underneath the younger man's. I actually have no idea whether or not John Lewis is younger than Carlson Gracie Jr. But you know what? One of them looks like a friar and the other one looks like a male stripper. So I'm going to say that he might be younger. Nice double leg, but John Lewis has once again used the fence to his advantage. And he's spun around, smearing, uh, yeah, smearing Carlson Gracie Jr. against the fence, keeping him around the front rather than letting him take the back. So Carlson Gracie is in a bit of trouble here because he's in a very jiu-jitsu mentality. He's not using this position of having his man pinned against the fence to do damage. He's just trying to hit that takedown over and over again. As you can see, uh, John Lewis nearly turned him there with a crossface, but you can see the power of the underhook position. Carlson Gracie was just able to turn him directly back onto the fence. And John Lewis has hooked his arm over it and gone, yeah, nah, you're not taking me down anytime soon. Uh, body punches from John Lewis, and Carlson Gracie is going to try and sneak out the back here, the way he's getting his head under that underarm, but that is very difficult with the cage there, especially when John Lewis is holding onto it. Foot stomps! Body punches from John Lewis, not very uh, committed to them. Very little hip behind them, so they're obviously just annoying. Uh, Carson Gracie's tried for the takedown there, but he cannot break John Lewis's grip on the uh, fence. Uh, you can see the Battle Cat Extreme Fighting fence slightly lower than the Octagon fence, and also shaped uh, differently, not chicken wire. Instead, it is shaped in a up, straight up and down mesh, which makes it easier to fucking grab. Uh, another high amplitude takedown attempt from Carlson Gracie there, but the fence has prevented it once again. Uh, John Lewis managed to turn him momentarily, only to be turned directly back onto the cage. Punches to the body from Master Gracie here. Oh, in Carlson Gracie Jr. Carlson Gracie Jr.'s corner, there is Vitor, a young Vitor Belfort. At the time, I think still known as Victor Gracie. 
Uh, you will see him running around the corners of the cage and shouting at people. Yeah, you can hear the uh, Brazilian corner, all the shouts of Porra coming from there. A lot of punches from John Lewis, and uh, Carlson Gracie doesn't look comfortable. Oh, he's switching it up to headbutts. Wise decision. If, even if you don't have the space to punch or elbow, you've probably got enough space to put your head, well, put your strength into a decent headbutt. Uh, maybe if he trained a little bit with Randy Couture, learn those sort of shoulder bumps, he could have been using that sort of dirty boxing technique. Another headbutt from Carlson Gracie, doing a good job here. Finally working out that he is in Vale Tudo rather than Brazilian Jiu Jitsu rules. Uh, another nice uh, whipping headbutt there. Still not quite a clean impact as you can see by the fact that John Lewis's face is still very pretty. Ah, John Pretty liked that one too. Lewis trying to do it from a defensive posture here. Tough way to fight. Looking at him. He knows where he wants to go. Another few punches from uh, Carson Gracie and John Lewis. Carson Gracie is actually deciding to do some damage from this position here. A uh, little bit of a slowdown in this fight after that action packed first five minutes. Because we've had almost five minutes of nothing but cage wrestling. Although they seem to be uh, sort of working on it now, actually doing some stuff in this position rather than just cuddling. Getting some good punches from uh, John Peretti and Carlson Gracie was trying to windmill punches around his uh, around John, uh, John Lewis's back and hitting him in the far ear. I don't know how successful it was, but it is a cool technique. I actually quite like doing that myself, you know, from the back, punching around someone's arm into the far side of their face. Yeah, another foot stomp from Carlson Gracie, and he's still trying for this takedown. I do not think he is going to get it anytime soon. When you see uh, John Lewis move like that, uh, you know that he knows where he's got to go. More bullshit from John Peretti. You know that he knows where he's got to go. What the fuck does that even mean, John? Great matchmaker. Terrible commentator. And uh, poor businessman as well. Because <laughs> I believe he had a uh, stock in the Battlecade Extreme Fighting. And rather than uh, minimizing his spending, he spent it all on penthouse models. Models for his t-shirts and Mr. T. <laughs> A uh, big lifting double leg from Carlson Gracie Jr. But he's not going to be able to finish that because of the hooked fence. Uh, John Lewis tried for a guillotine very briefly there, but Carlson Gracie got his head free. Yeah, this is why they don't allow fence grabs in the UFC because of the sort of... The amount of grappling you can simply shut down by just going, Nah, my arm's going to stay here and I'm going to hold on to this fence. Look at the striations on John Peretti's fucking chest. That dude is unreasonably lean. Two guys in one position. Not John Peretti, John Lewis. You can look at the striations on John uh, Peretti's chin if you want. You can find that man. That, I actually think I cut out every single second of his appearance because every time we saw John Peretti, he was just bullshitting about nothing or making or slowing the event down completely. So uh, you won't actually see his glorious butt chin. But he was, however, in the uh, film that is sort of divisive to say the least, Gangs of New York. I personally didn't like that movie, but uh, I did like Daniel Day-Lewis's 
portrayal in, of Bill the Butcher in it. He was a scary, scary man. Uh, John Preddy made a brief ap appearance as one of the Butcher's gang members, the one who takes his coat and hat. Uh, he is the one with the glorious butt chin. Ah! Oh! A uh, slip there from Carlson Gracie as he tried to uh, get a punch in. And now John Lewis is on top doing damage. Deep half work and or sort of leg lock work from Carlson Gracie here. Trying to uh, keep John Peretti off. Uh, John, fucking John Peretti. John Lewis off him. Uh, he's really trying for this uh, leg lock. Winding himself right around it. But it's going to be very difficult when um, John Lewis has got himself to the fence that way. Uh, he's wound his legs through in a very interesting sort of grapevine here and uh, now John Lewis using the fence to uh, lever, to hold himself up while he uses his other foot to lever himself out. Uh, back to this fence holding position again. Nice little bit of action there. Gokor says come on boys do some more stuff except he will do absolutely nothing to enforce them doing some more stuff. So yeah, I believe uh, in 97, this was the longest that any man had gone... Oh no, I lie. Because Ken Shamrock and always Gracie had that 30 minute terrible fight. Uh, I lie, ignore me completely. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> yeah, I didn't say anything. <laughs> So we're back to here, uh, John Lewis working those body punches, not really doing much damage to Carlson Gracie Jr. While Carlson Gracie Jr. holds on and tries for a takedown. See the problem is, he tried for something different and that backfired massively, so now he's probably just going to cuddle him up against the fence for the remainder of this 15 minute round. There is of course 5 minutes of overtime if they go the distance. Another nice headbutt from uh, Carlson Gracie here. Man, he's starting to work those nicely. Still trying to lever himself around uh, John Lewis's back. Uh, John Lewis has actually used sort of a... Picked up one leg in a half guard, and that's preventing... Carlson Gracie from finishing that back take as much as the fence and everything else. You can see the absolutely horrific cauliflower ear that uh, Carlson Gracie Jr. has. Nice headbutt. Uh, John Lewis punching sort of tip around the spine, which is a bit of a dog shot, but you know. Weird bare knuckle fighting is as weird bare knuckle fighting does. Another headbutt from Carlson Gracie. Uh, John Lewis moving his head away there. So they've uh, high-fived each other and they're going to get ready for the next round. Look at that mulleted man in uh, Carlson Gracie's corner. Holy shit, that thing is a piece of beautiful artwork. Half Gracie shouting at uh, Carlson Gracie here, right in his ear, rubbing ice on his head. Should invest in a real ice ice bag, Half Gracie. Come on. John Lewis's corner look like a bunch of slavs with their uh, striped Adidas stuff. Or is that Puma? Didn't Puma ever... Uh, who even cares? Wet. 
All right, here we go. Shredded Man versus Giant Baby, round two in the five minutes of overtime. Little Gracie uh, knee stomps from Carlson Gracie. And he's bundled John Lewis over to the fence again. John Lewis is a little bit unhappy about this and is wailing on his body while Carlson Gracie tries to headbutt him. But John Lewis has hooked the fence. In fact, Carlson Gracie has hooked the fence and said, you know what, it works for you, it's going to fucking work for me. I'm going to use this to keep you pinned here. Quite a bit of action with these two guys. And now right in front of us, they do the same thing that was going on earlier. Uh... John Lewis actually winding up on these uh, body shots, trying to do some real damage here. Carlson Gracie trying for that uh, back take again, getting his head right in the underarm of John Lewis. Lewis using that cross face and undercook to keep him in front of him. Could probably use it to turn if Carlson Gracie wasn't holding onto the fence. Oh, Gracie's got that underhook back, so he's probably going to pick his head underneath the underarm of John Lewis fairly soon. Headbutts from Carson Gracie, punches from John Lewis. Stiff-arming uh, away the face of Carlson Gracie there, or at least trying to. Didn't really work out, and he ate a headbutt uh, as a result. Punches to the body. Lots of shots of poha from the uh, corner of Carlson Gracie. And you can see Carlson Gracie has hooked that fence for all he's worth. He's not uh, letting John Lewis get away from him. Another big headbutt. So yeah, um... Good fight for about five minutes of it, and kind of boring for the other, well, who knows, two, mi two minutes more, it might be uh, something exciting could happen then. I could be lying through my teeth though. After all, I did watch this fight before, so I know exactly what happened. Although I can't exactly remember, so that might tell you that it wasn't too super exciting. Nice headbutts from Carlson Gracie, and you can see he's really trying for these takedowns now. He really wants John Lewis on the ground. But considering when he had John Lewis on the ground, he couldn't really get anything going, so there you go. Not long left. Oh, they have called it. So maybe it wasn't a minute and 33 left. That is the end of the match, and so it is a draw. The inaugural lightweight, <coughs> excuse me. Championship for Extreme Fighting has gone to a draw. And we will listen to what Mr. T has to say to these two fighting titans, Giant Baby and Very Tall Shredded Man. Thanks, Dave. Look here, Big John. What was your strategy holding on the ropes like that? Could you tell the people? When I got to the ground, I felt really slippery, and he's very, very good. And he's very good at the legs and stuff, so... I started getting slippery, a little bit tired, so I decided to use the ropes for my balance since it was there to use. This is what a strategy. Okay, I, I want to ask, could you ask uh, Gracie Jr., Carlson Jr., his strategy, you know, why you couldn't do more, be more active on the ropes with John? He has a good punch. And he was all the time holding the cage, and if it weren't this, he would, uh, it would be a good fight. Oh, so if he wasn't holding on the cage, it would have been a better fight, but what you're saying? Yeah, that's it, of course. All right. All right. 
Okay, could you watch the screen? Tell me what, he, what was the strategy there? usar minha tática de luta, mas ele ele optou por ele não deixou por segurar na grade. Junior was trying to do his fight technique, his jiu-jitsu to put him on the ground, but he didn't allow uh, putting his hand in the cage all the time, holding the cage. Right. Okay. Right. Okay, John, tell us about Carlson, his head butts going against you, and I know he's a you know a legend, and you had to be careful. Right. You know, I, I can see, I feel I'm a good sensitivity to feel what's going to come, so I know when he's going to do head butt. Because he pulls away every time before he does it. When he's going to do things, I know that. Um, I understand, like when I have my him under my arm, he wants to go to my back. So I know I can't just turn crazy because I know he'll take advantage. I understand what he's trying to do. He was doing very good and he was very strong. And uh, I couldn't afford to make any mistakes. Right, but uh, how about the headbutts? Was he taking the toll? I know you hit him in the ribs a lot. Tell us about the headbutts. Well, if he, would, he, got a lot, he got a couple that were good. But overall, I think most of them hit him on the neck. Oh. But, very, but he's still very strong. I mean, he's very good. Right, it was it was the lowest fight of the night so far. But uh, tell me, how do that bother the Grayson, the Gracie family, considering this was a draw? Okay, the heavyweight finals coming up. Junior said that he's a good athlete, and he tried his technique, and Junior was trying his. Right. Well, it was a good fight, and I like to show everybody the, the, the good sportsmanship of it. You know, both guys tried, you know, to draw the longest fight of the night, you know. I'm excited. I know the fans liked it. But uh, you do you have anything to say about Brother Gracie here? He said, I very respect him. When I came into this, I already know. I mean, I respect his family. I respect Carlson Gracie very, very much. He has an incredible track record of his own fighting. So I, I didn't take anything. I mean, I knew already it was going to be very hard. All right. Hey, I want to say... All I want to say, congratulations to both of you guys. You know, good fight. And we're going to take it back to you, Dave. I enjoyed it. Okay, Mr. T, we did too. Right. Here we go. Final of the heavyweight tournament. Gary Myers versus Conan Silvera. Marcus Silvera. Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu purple belt at the time. A uh, man whose black belt is somewhat questionable. Nice uh, takedown from... Gary Myers there, and Conan has gone to butterfly hooks and then to a normal closed guard. He's keeping Gary pinned nice and tight to him to prevent Gary from getting any damage off with his tiny little bull head. Well, no, his head's massive. He's just on a tiny body. <laughs> and not necessarily tiny, very squat. Oh, God, I've just realized it's uh, Conan the Barbarian versus a literal dwarf. <laughs> So yeah, fantasy battle at uh, Extreme Fighting 1, Cimmerian versus uh, Son of the Mountain. Body punches from Gary Myers here, good art wrestling control. And he's uh, trying for a headbutt on Conan Silvera here. But Conan's doing a good job of keeping his head, their heads pinned together so he can't really get any damage going. Although he is getting friction from Gary Myers' freshly shaved head. Which is something you might want to do if you're a cheating fuck. Uh, shave your head about two weeks before your fight so that you've got a nice spiky stubble growing back. And then use that to grind on your opponent's face and open up cuts with pure friction. Uh, going for an elevator hook sweep here, but Gary Myers' hook in the fence prevented him from being swept. Good little bit of jujitsu there and nice ring awareness from Gary Myers. He's trying for that uh, forearm choke with the fingers hooked in the fence again, but that is not going to work on the man that is Conan Silvera. As you can see, he's pulled the arm off and recovered his uh, guard. Gary Myers is, I uh, wouldn't say that he's content to stay on, uh, wouldn't say that Conan's content to stay on the bottom as uh, John Pretty has just said, I'm just saying that Gary Myers has a very good base and is doing a good job of keeping him down there. Uh, maybe he's trying for a scissor sweep here, but Gary Myers has backed out and settled himself back down. Trying to sweep Gary Myers would be difficult as fuck because he's shaped like a literal rock. So uh, he doesn't, his center of gravity is about an inch and a half off the ground. Uh, he's trying again for that uh, forearm choke, and they're going to stop it here because there is a cut opened up on one of the competitors. I'm not sure which.
Oh, little cut under the eye of Gary Myers there as well. And a little one over the eye of Conan Silvera. Gary Myers doesn't seem happy about something. Uh, maybe he's saying that they definitely shouldn't stop the fight. I'm loving the haircuts of, and uh, just general outfit of Gary Myers' corner. I might stick a little uh, screenshot of them in right at the end of the show. But then again, I might not. Because we don't need to, because you can see him in all their glory there. Crew cuts and American flag parachute pants all around. Alright, they're deciding to keep going. And they're not going to restart them on the ground, which is a massive fuck you to the work that Gary Myers put into that takedown. Alright, we've started again. Uh, Gary's getting back against the fence. As you can see, the uh, kickboxing of Gary Myers is significantly lacking. Eats a big leg kick there and uh, staggers afterwards, so you can say that they definitely hurt him. Uh, he's gone for another shot, but he's not managed to get in. Nicer standing headbutt from Gary Myers there. Bit of left way from him. Uh, another low kick. He doesn't like those. And then waves Conan on. Ducks in for another double leg. But Conan has seen that one coming and grabbed a guillotine. He's uh, swapped his hands. He did have his arm in, but now he's just got uh, just got the neck of Gary Myers. And he is cranking the shit out of that. And Gary has tapped. That is the match. And your extreme fighting heavyweight champion is Marcus Conan Silvera, uh, he's given that mulleted man a hug and a high five to everyone in the Brazilian top team corner. Here we go, the middleweight title fight, Igor Zinoviev versus Mario Sperry. Pouring jab from Mario Sperry and uh, Igor Zinoviev manages to stop that takedown and hit a nice uppercut. Uh, Mario Sperry's managed to dig the, under un uh, dig the underhook and pinned he goes in over against the fence. And unlike his teammate John Lewis, he has not hooked the fence like a cheating fuck and has been taken down by the Zen machine himself. Uh, he's in a bit of a shitty spot here. Uh, Mario Sperry has his leg wrapped in between. Uh, Eagles and Oviev's in sort of a half guard, but it's back to front, and that is actually leg weave or dope mount, and is a terrible spot to be because it keeps you pinned and lets them pass almost at will, as you can see there. As now Mario is in mount, uh, Eagles going to empty half here, keeping him sort of tr keeping him stuck inside uh, mount, and a nice knee to the ass from Mario Sperry. Eagles seems to be fairly calm, and he's just keeping the upper body of Mario Sperry close to his so as to prevent any punching damage being done. He's going for a headlock sweep here but Mario Sperry managed to base out and prevent that from happening getting his uh, center of gravity all the way back. Igor Zinoviev has uh, managed to go belly up to prevent his back from being taken and is uh, on the verge of recovering guard. He's gone back to empty half, but Mario Sperry has fed that leg back through again. Nice jujitsu from the Zen machine. Oh, he's uh, bridged here and created a bit of space. He's nearly gotten his hips in, but he's managed to go belly down and stand back up. Nicely done, Igor Zinoviev. Not fucking around on the ground and has created separation. A uh, little bit of a skip on the DVD there, but who cares. Nice low kick from Igor Zinoviev. He had fairly nice striking for the time, but he's tripled up on that low kick and Mario has seen it coming and gotten in on that takedown. Uh, Igor's using a frame here, preventing Mario from getting his hips fully in, and uh, Mario's trying for a trip. Ah, now Igor's been listening to his uh, cheating fuck of a teammate and has hooked the fence to prevent the takedown. But the moment he let go is Mario... Uh, he lets go. Mario has tried for a takedown and hit another nice outside trip. This time, however, Igor has managed to wrap up half guard. Which is a bit better than he was before. It's not a traditional half guard. He's, uh, I think it's sort of in an X over the top of Mario's ferries and now he's gone to just a single leg. I can see that being passed by Mario fairly soon. Although Mario doesn't seem to be bothered, he realized he has 12 minutes on the clock to do whatever the hell he wants in. He's uh, tried to sl knee slice through the middle, but Igor managed to hip away and maintain half guard. 
Yep, and he's going back up to it. Going to combat base. Tried for it again, but Eagle Zenobia has recovered. God, look at that. Look at the grappling chops of the Sambo Master. In fact, and he's trying to flail up and do some damage to Mario Sperry. Sperry's uh, shoving the other foot down and advancing to half guard, but Eagle has managed to maintain his guard. Punches from uh, Mario Sperry and Igor is pushing away and uh, Sperry dived back into guard but Igor uh, caught it up and then Sperry managed to hit a nice high step over the outside and is into half guard with a windshield wiper on that foot and is slide through and straight into mount. Beautiful stuff from Mario Sperry. Uh, now he's in sort of a spur ride with his feet on Igor Zinoviev's hips. So rather than his weight being on the floor, it is all on the hips of Mr. Zinoviev, making him very difficult to move. And um, <laughs> John Peretti just said that no one has gotten out of his position with Mario Sperry, except that earlier tonight, Rajad Moncayo managed to hit a sweep from the bottom of Mount on Mario Sperry. So much bullshit from <laughs> John Peretti. Terrible commentator. Uh, the corners are not respecting which side of the ring they're supposed to stay on and just running around willy-nilly. Hard punches from uh, Mario Sperry on top. But Igor is managing to mitigate most of the damage, and Mario's looking a little bit tired, a little bit less active than he was before. Although he always seems quite calm in top position. Um, Igor's and Oviev doing a very good job. Nice stiff arm into punch there from Mario Sperry, but Igor managed to hip, uh, hip bump at the same time, preventing some of the damage from that strike. Uh, Igor's trying to recover half guard here, and Sperry's doing a very good job of keeping his feet free. Uh, of course, he's doing a very good job. He is like one of the best um, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu guys to ever basically exist on the planet. Still in the same spot, and Mario Sperry looks a little bit tired. He seems like he's just going to have a little snooze on the top of Igor Zinoviev and let Igor tire himself out. But uh, Igor's uh, trying to lock something up here. Uh, Mario has gone to a grapevine there and tried for something else. Igor momentarily tried to hip away, but uh, did not finish the hip escape and recover. God. Oh, there we go. Stiff arm from Igor Zinoviev, and he's gotten up. Nice punches, but straight into a single leg from Mario Sperry. He's tried for a guillotine here, but Sperry has managed to pass around to side control. But Igor's managed to catch him up in half guard. Uh, he's missed the half guard, and Sperry's gone to mount, but he's still got the guillotine grip. Uh, which isn't probably finishable from here, unless... You know, I have seen a couple of amateur fights finished from this position, which always is a great thing. And um, Sperry's actually trying to guillotine him from the same spot. Um, at this time, the Von Flew choke was not yet invented, so Sperry is trying to pry the arms free. But Igor Zinoviev has big damn gorilla arms, and he's uh, used the headlock to nearly get a sweep, and he's trying for a guillotine here on Mario Sperry. He's gone to arm in guillotine, but that is probably not going to work, because Henzo Gracie is not... Um, Henzo might have invented it, but it hasn't sort of permeated the universe just yet. And Sperry is back in mount. Igor Zinoviev is holding on to this uh, headlock for all that he is worth. Uh, his big strong arms are doing a lot to keep Mario Sperry stuck. Uh, he's lost the arm, but he's gone to back to the choke. Sperry is going to pass round to side control. And you can see that Igor is trying very hard here. There's a lot of effort written on his face. And he's tried for the sweep again. Managed to get the underhook and managed to uh, recover half guard, which is an improvement on the position he was in before. Although Sperry is probably going to pass that almost immediately. Look at that foot coming through, sliding and freeing the other foot. And straight into mount again, because he is, of course, the Zen machine. Nice punches from Sperry from on top. Uh, Igor's punching up from the bottom. 
And uh, Sperry's sort of flattened out and maintained the position. Another punch up from the bottom from uh, Igor Zanogia, but he only managed to get some hip into that one. Looked like it had a little bit of sting on it. He's gone belly down, which might not be the smartest thing, but he's gone back to belly up, preventing himself from taking damage. If you're in a position and you've got sort of a limited amount of time before the end of the round, swapping from back to mount to back to mount again on the bottom can prevent you from taking any damage as the person on top will continuously try to maintain their position rather than uh, risking losing the position to land shots. Of course this doesn't work if they switch to a floating control and just decide to hit you while you wriggle around like a fish. Uh, good punches from Mario Sperry here. Stiff arming into those shots very nicely is Mario Sperry. Yeah, Igor's not having a great time, but he is doing a very good job of defending in this position. He was posted up there and doing some damage, but Igor's managed to grab the head and snap him down again. And he's going belly down here and trying for a headlock throw. And he's actually managed to get it. And so Spar Sperry is now on the bottom uh, in half guard. But the problem is he has the underhook. And so the moment Eagle loses that head, Sperry is going to be out the back and on his spine like a monkey. And so uh, Igor might be able to base up and stand up afterwards. We will see. He's still holding on to that head. Very tough man is Igor Zinoviev. But yeah, Sperry's gotten to his knees. And yeah, Eagle's decided that, fuck that, he's just going to stand up. Sperry tried to kick him in the face through his legs. Very interesting technique there. And he's uh, moving around, trying to take down Sperry. Landing punches from the back. Uh, oh, Sperry's trying to hit the takedown, trying to take down Eagle. Landing punches from the back, uh, up under uh, Eagle's arms. Uh, another nice uppercut. But uh, Mario Sperry looks very tired. Now he's uh, switching around to the front, trying for a single leg takedown. But Igor Zinoviev has a solid grip on the fence, so a pushing takedown from that position is probably not going to work. Alright, he switched back to the back, and he's going to go probably for some more punches here. Another punch to the head, and Igor's ducked down. Another nice uppercut from Sperry. Again, says his uh, corner, telling him underneath. And uh, Mario's looking at his neck meaningfully. He's jumped for the back, but he's missed it and eaten a massive fucking kick to the face. And now he's in the guillotine. Uh, he's wiped some blood off his face onto the mat, and the match has been uh, sort of stopped there momentarily because there is a very large cut on the head of Mario Sperry. And that is it. That is the end of the match. Igor Zinoviev is the winner of the middleweight tournament of Extreme Fighting Battle K1. I hope you all enjoyed this abridged version. I significantly enjoyed it a lot more than I did the unabridged one. That one was most... Uh, I do still have the recording of that, but I'm not going to give that to anybody because most of it is me just sighing and whinging about John Peretti talking. So I hope you all enjoyed this. I hope to see you all next time. And everybody should go out and buy some American flag.